Welcome back to the Gospel in Life, Study 7, Gospel Renewal Part 2. So the Gospel Renewal is the centerpiece of our vision, so therefore it takes two studies to go through. So we've covered Study 1, and today we're going to be looking at Study 2. So to, to remind you, you've got the Gospel, Religion, and Anti-Religion as the three points of the triangle that we grapple with every single day. Right? So let's look at the difference that this makes in our lives. So let's talk about obedience. Why do we obey? Well, if you are a religious person, why well, obey God in order to be accepted? A gospel person will say, I obey because I am accepted. Right? What about motivation? Why should I obey God? Well, if I don't obey God, I will have be punished. Maybe my car will run off the bridge. Maybe I'll become bankrupt. The motivation for obedience for the gospel person is grateful joy because Christ gave his life for me and so therefore the life that I live now is I live for him, whatever the case may be. Uh, what is the purpose of your obedience? Well, I obey in order to get blessings or things from God, which is basically prosperity gospel. Gospel persons, uh, I obey in order to delight and resemble him because in resembling him, I find joy and I, my joy is in him. Uh, when things go wrong, well, I get upset because I deserve a good life. I went to church, paid my tithing, been a moralistic guy. So therefore, why, why, why is why the cancer? Why the accident? I don't deserve this. And sometimes I lose faith because of that. When things go wrong, the gospel person will struggle, and, but realize that all the punishment that I actually have in my life, actually, I'm, I'm, and things go wrong, it's not because I, uh, you know, I, I did wrong particularly, but all the punishment actually fell on Christ. And this is discipline and training. Although there are times when you, uh, you know, actually st uh, things go wrong because of our own sin. But that, aside from that, it is discipline and training, right? What if I'm criticized? Well, I get upset. I'm furious because I'm a good person, so I need to protect myself. And at the moment you see people protecting themselves, whenever they get criticized, you know it's due to religious, moralistic, behavioral change. I need to protect myself. If you actually criticize a gospel-centered person, he struggles, okay? But I struggle, I get upset, but it's not essential to protect my image because my identity is not built on my performance, but on Christ's love. And it's, you do struggle, but in the end, you reflect back that, that, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a sinner, just forgiven. All right? So I think that's the difference. Now, there are subtle behavioral changes in religious people. We need to understand because that affects us. All right? We, we defend. What, because it's difficult to receive negative feedback. We get upset. We always think we're right. There's anger. And the reason is that our perception of goodness is actually based on our behavioral record. So this is our record, I've done this, this, this. If you criticize my record, which means my record is now blemished, so I need to protect it. And so therefore, if I'm protecting, I need to explain things away. I need to talk about my successes. I need to justify my decisions. I'm not looking for truth anymore. I'm just defending myself and justifying my decisions. Or I'm faking it. I keep up appearances, I maintain a respectable image, wear my tie when I preach in order to impress others. My behavior is driven by what other people think of me. If they don't think keeping long hair is good, I will then cut my hair. If they don't think uh, 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 um, eating too much supper is, is good, then I'll stop eating supper. Yeah, I was driven by what other people think of me. So I avoid thinking reflectively about my own life. I'm just governed by what I'm People say, and I get so upset when they gossip about me behind my back. So I, I try to fake it, all right? Even though I'm upset with you because you criticize me, I fake it by smiling, right? Because I don't want you to think badly of me. And then because of that, when you come to sharing, I'm opaque. Because not many people know the real me. I may not even know my real me because I'm faking, I'm faking it so long that I'm living a fake life. So these are subtle behavioral changes in religious people. Or I exaggerate. I tend to think of myself and talk more highly of myself than I ought. I make things good 
and bad to be much bigger than what they actually are. It's like I caught a fish, she was this big, all right? As a result, things often get more attention than they deserve and have a way of making me stressed or anxious. So therefore, because of all these things of my protecting my self-esteem, I get more stressed and anxious. Or I'm hiding. I like to hide because of subtle, my, my self-esteem depends on my my record. So hiding is about shame. I tend to conceal as much as I can in my life, especially the bad stuff. So I'll share all the good stuff, but I won't share the bad stuff. I don't think people will accept or love me for myself. So therefore, I keep hiding. You only see an aspect of me. In the cell group or life group, I'm not going to share very much. Or even if I share, it will be the good stuff and not the bad stuff. Or I'm blaming. I'm quick to blame others when the sin is pointed at me or circumstance, it's not me, I got an excuse. I had a difficult time owning my contributions to sin or conflict. So there's an element of pride that assumes it's not my fault. All right, it's, it's because of a fear of rejection uh, if, it, if it actually is my fault. So blaming other people is a way to deflect, uh, to basically uh, project to other people your sin. All right, so this uh, again is common. Or downplaying, you minimize sin, or circumstances as if they're normal. Well, LGBTQ people live together. It's okay as long as they love each other. It's it's fine. As a result, things don't get uh, often don't get attention they deserve. They have a way of mounting up to the point of being overwhelming. So this is downplaying. All right. So uh, when you pray, okay, uh, why do we pray? A religious person pray because petitions. I want to get what I want. It's to be able to control the environment because the environment is getting out of control. The gospel person will be praying to worship God and to grow in the relationship with God, not to get what he wants from God. Take a look at your, record your prayers and you'll find that often we're in petition mode because we want to control our environment rather than to revel in the beauty of who God is. Or the view of ourselves. Well, we're confident and proud and judgmental if we've lived a good life. We're humble and feel like a failure if we fell below the standards. You lived a good life and suddenly you had an affair. And so therefore you're totally humbled, you're shattered, you feel like a failure. If you actually have a good view of yourself and the gospel view of yourself, Martin Luther says in the Latin, simul justus et peccator, where simultaneously sinful and yet declared righteous by God. So there's deep humility because we are sinners and yet supreme confidence because of what Christ has done for us. All right. So our self-esteem is based on our own hard work and you look down on others as immoral or lazy if you are a religious person. If you're a non-religious, if you're a gospel-centered person, we're saved by grace. I'm humble because I can't look down on other people. I don't need to win any arguments because I am a sinner saved by grace. There's nothing to defend. All right? Uh, idols. Well, we talked about idols before as an obstacle to spiritual transformation. My idols are my talents, moral record, personal discipline, social status, hope, okay? Is in and, and it gives me hope, meaning, and happiness and security. These are my idols. This is what I focus on. These are what makes me uh, uh, get up at night in anxiety or makes me uh, on, go on cloud nine. Gospel centered person is good things, are never the ultimate things or idols. So, therefore, there's a limit to the damage from anxiety, bitterness. Uh, when the good things are actually threatened. Good things are a pointer to how beautiful God is. But when they're threatened to be taken away, uh, we limit our anxiety and bitterness because they were never ours. They're all given by God and we have the ultimate treasure is in God. Right? So this is gospel renewal, how it actually affects the way we feel in our lives when we actually have the gospel in our center. I hope that the groups can actually discuss this and how we struggle with this in our lives. May God add a blessing to his word.